world is under siege. I had heard rumors of a formless void, beast of sorts, swallowing up distant worlds. A force that, through its collective hatred, destroyed everything it has come across. And now that same force is attempting to breach my realm, threatening its sovereignty. Farfathom forest, the infestation bleeds out from the trees and in an intense effort to engulf my realm, I must erect sentinels to protect my realm. And that, people, brings us to today. It is time to start preparing for animation, and we must rig our characters and our monsters to perfection so they can move about in our games, in our worlds, in our animations, so we can have all the fun in the world. We must prepare them for life. Now, while this tutorial is mostly aimed for the PS1 and N64 crowd, the things that you will learn here today can be crossed over to just about anything from high poly, low poly, to games, or various forms of animation. It doesn't matter. It's rigging. It'll work for it all. Before we can start animating anything, of course, we need to set up our animation rig, and we will be using Blender, and we'll be using a Blender add-on called Rigify. I think this will be perfect for anyone who is just starting out, trying to get some rigging done, and that way we don't have to learn about how to make the skeleton ourselves. we can just get something that is ready to go, up and running, and works real nice. And it suffice to say, we'll be learning all the basic fundamentals about rigging, from bringing in Rigify to use, to something that is called weight painting, which will inform our models how the bones will influence each limb. We'll be going over segmented limbs, as well as deformable limbs. And of course, with that introduction out of the way, Arbathus, your part in this, my friend Arbathus, will be to fetch me a soul stone from a vendor in town. With it, we can bring this thing to semi-live. Here's some gold for the stone and, of course, for the courier service. <laughs> Thank you, but I'll be fine. I have this. It's not the best weapon, but... Eh, it's mostly for making things, uh, but it's still a dagger. If I'm not here by the time you get back, I'll more than likely... It'll might, I'll more than likely be in my pocket dimension, which is just beyond the mirror in the house. Be safe, my friend. <sighs> Alright, let's get started. To start off, we're going to need a 3D model to rig, of course. I have mine right here, and it's all set up and ready to go. Next, we're going to need to link up Rigify to Blender. This is actually pretty easy, seeing as it just comes pre-installed by default, it's just not activated just yet. So, let's go ahead and do that right now. To get started, let's go up here to the top, and click on the Edit tab. 
Next, click on Preferences down at the bottom to open up another window. Now from here you will see all these windows, but you don't have to pay those any mind right now. We are looking for the Add-on tab, which should be located here or just selected by default. Now that we have this selected, all we need to do is simply search for Rigify. So up here, where the search bar is, just type in Rigify, or just Rig, and it should pop up. Once it does, just click the box, and it is all set up and ready to go. It is activated, and we can bring Rigify Rig in the scene. All right, now that that bit of the battle is done, they're gonna call us grave robbers because we're going to shove some bones in this thing and get this bad boy ready to go. Hit Shift A to bring up a window menu. Then we need to click the armature tab down here and bring up some options. Now you will see plenty of options. That depending on what you are doing, you may want to, you know, select different ones for different things. But for our singular purposes, we're working here in the glorious PS1 graphics or N64 type stuff, we're just going to use the simple one. That should be all that we need, really. Which is the bottom option called basic, and there we will use the basic humanoid rig, or basic humanoid better rig. And voila, this is our rig. It's simple and relatively straightforward, but we still need to set things up. It's simple enough to do, by the way. To do this, we just need to go up top over here, and with the rig selected, we need to go from, or from object mode to edit mode. Uh, be careful not to go into pose mode just yet. That is for animating, which uh, we won't be doing quite just yet. And now that we are in edit mode, let's get things uh, set up. However, before we do anything anymore, I think it's best to set up symmetrical mode, which we can make things, it'll make things quite a bit easier. And basically by what we do on one side mirrors onto the other. To do that, we're going to need to go to our toolbar. If that is not up, hit the N key to bring it up. And then go over here to the Tools tab, where you can click, tick the X-axis mirror button. This makes it so that whatever you do on one side will happen to the other. It's literally a mirror mode. It is fantastic. Alrighty, just watch what I do here. I like to keep the balls of the, of the bone bits uh, wherever the limbs are going to bend and or rotate. It's okay if some of the bones, you know, like in the toes or fingers, if they go through the mesh, but mostly you want to keep most of the bones firmly inside the body at all times. If you want, you can delete bones you don't like if you don't really find a use for them. These bones right here. I don't see much of a reason for them. If you do, cool. I don't, so I'm just going to get rid of them by hitting X and deleting them. Oh, and to move the bones around, you know, just hit G. And it helps if you're in wireframe mode, that way you can see through the bones. There's an option to have x-ray mode on, but I just prefer doing it this way. If you're like me and you find that you need to add a bone, uh, select the end node there and hit E to extrude it to add an extra bone. Alright, now let's get to work on some segmented limbs. I'm going to start with the shim bones for this one. When it comes to segmented limbs, what we want is for one bone and only one bone to influence to inf influenza the mesh. Sorry, influence the mesh. I have no idea what I was about to say. <laughs> this is what makes rigging uh, segmented limbs insanely simple. To get started, click the mesh that you want to attach to the rig, hold shift and click the rig itself. Next, we're going to assign the rig and let the system uh, put automatic weights on them. To do this, we just hold control and then hit P. And then move our mouse down to the automatic weights button. This is great because Blender can pretty much set up most of the weights for us, saving us a lot of time. But of course, we will more than likely have to still do some editing on our end. And speaking of editing, what we're going to do now is make sure that this particular piece of our leg is only connected to one thing, which will be our shin bone. So what we're going to do is, once again, we're going to make sure we're on weight painting. Yes, more weight painting. And we are going to go down to our little groups, our context data object, and we're going to find our shin, which I believe it's the left one. Yes, left one. So as we can see, it is connected only, as far as we know, only to the shin. But what we need to do is we need to double check. We need to make sure that we are not connected to anything else. So what we're going to do is thigh. Okay, it is blue. And foot. It is not connected. Sometimes, however, you may see, you may find that it's maybe like, hold on, say it go to our thigh, you'll see, hey, paint, damn it, oh, 
There you go. You'll notice that sometimes, okay, our segmented limb may be may have a connection just to something else. And that can usually be wrong. See, we don't really want that. We want to make sure on segmented limbs that our segmented portion is only connected to one bone. Otherwise, we may have strange issues. So let's find a strange issue. Let's see what happens, what it does. As you can see right now, as we rotate it, it is bending our bone in a way that we don't want. We do not wish this on any of our segmented limbs. What we need to do is instead, if we find something like that happening, go over to it, go back to weight painting. That's texture painting, let's not do that. Go pa painting, forward slash that so we single it out and hit that bad boy to zero. And that will set us right proper. I will reiterate, unlike, unlike deformable bones, we want our bone, our segmented limbs, to only be influenced by one singular monumental bone. That is it. It shares with nobody. And with that, just go ahead and do all the other segmental limbs you have for your model. All right, now that we got the segmental limbs out of the way, let's go ahead and do some bendable, some deformable stuff. And I think a pretty good example for that would just be this torso. So let's select the torso. Select the bones as well, holding shift, hit command P or control P to use automatic weights. And it will it should automatically be set up. So let's hit, let's click our bones and test them out by going over to pose mode just to move them about. And as you can see, it works pretty darn well. Yes. Now once again we could make some edits if we so chose. And to do that, let's go back over to object mode. Select our mesh, go down to weight painting, and go over to our object data, and let's scroll through some of the bones and see what specifically is influencing what. And so we can see that yes, in this particular mesh, different bones are controlling different things. And if there's anything that you want to adjust, maybe you're thinking, well, this for certain animations, maybe this configuration won't work quite right. We can go ahead and do something like that. So if we select our bones, go over to pose mode, and we can make a very extreme weird pose. So let's just say, for example, that how this is behaving right now, we do not like. We find it quite offensive, actually. So what we can do then is go back over to object no mode, Select our mesh, go back to weight painting mode, and from there, we can adjust our painting. So, and this is nice, so we'll see. Right now we are on the left pelvic bone, but maybe that's not what we specifically want. Maybe we just want this thigh bone. So let's go to our left thigh. Okay, maybe for instance, we just don't want the left thigh to influence much of up here at all. And that is fine. We set our weight to zero, and then we paint on the mesh, and we just change it. And you can see that it updates it in real time. So if this is the configuration that you like, that's fine. Or perhaps you want something more gradual. You can change and edit as you see fit, because maybe you think, oh, you know what, muscles kind of pull and bend in certain ways, and you know, maybe this is fine. And you can adjust these however you see fit. And then once you find a configuration that you like, say like that, what we can do, since we don't want to keep this pose, we'll go back to edit mode, select our rig, go back to pose mode. Now to reset our bones, we'll hit A to select everything, and then hit Alt R to reset everything. Or if you're on a Mac, Option R to reset all the bones. And that will be, that will take care of that. Okay, now that we have everything up and running, let's get ourselves a default animation going. Now don't worry, it's nothing too intense. We're basically just going to record a T-pose. Simple, easy, and that's what we'll, we'll be doing for the rest of this section. Now to do this, let's go up to the animation tab, which is up here at the top right. There we go. Click the back button here to make sure that we're always at the beginning. Alright, and now what we're going to do is we're going to name this new animation. And to do that, we're gonna need to switch over to the Action Editor. Click over here on the drop-down menu and click on Action Editor. Do not worry, we're gonna go over all this more in the next video. 
But for now, all we need to do is just create the default animation. And now, why would we be doing this? Well, it's because in game engines like Unity, uh, it's it's always going to render in the first pose that it sees, in this case, animation. And if your animation is all scrumbled up, crumbled up and wonky, and you want to do any edits to it in engine, it can be a little weird. And not very fun. So it's always a good idea to just make an animation named Default. And yes, it's just going to be a regular normal T-Pose. Let's click the button to make a new animation. I recommend naming it as I am, so it's the first thing that ever appears in your Unity or Game Engine Editor. Next, we're going to hit the record button and hit A to select everything, every single bone that we need. And oh, make sure that we are in pose mode whenever we are doing this. That, my friends, is very important. From here, we can use the R key to rotate in an extreme arch. I thought we were just making a T-pose. Well, for any pose to be recorded, we need to move it. After we move it, the data is stored in the animation folder. And then what we will do is we're going to reset it. Not by hitting Control z but by hitting Alt-R to reset the rotations of your bones. And after that, voila, your animation is ready. Notice that we are only going to use just one second, because quite frankly, that is all we need. And we only need this so our game editor will know what pose to put it in, in engine. And we named it in such a way that that is the first animation it sees, therefore it renders it in that pose in perpetuity. And after that, we're all set and ready to go for animations. Here on the action editor, we can indeed add more animations should we choose, but once again, we will handle that in the next video. And that, my friends, is how we rig anything. Whew. All right, everything's all set. Now all I need is the stone. Oh! That's <sighs> oh, only a caber. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised you lot weren't taken out too. Well, I guess you guys had pretty good infrastructure. Oh, what, are, what are you doing here, little guy? Uh, uh, look, it's not like I'm not happy to see you. It's just, I don't think this is really a place you'd want to be today, my friend. Things have gotten a bit hairy around here. Uh, and not to mention, it is... Not to mention, it's cold, and I mean, you are an amphibian. Uh, I guess... Uh, well, I guess it's a good thing that burning rock down there is still burning. <laughs> uh, here, I, I think I have a, a scarf or something you can use as a towel. What? <laughs>